On this channel, you have seen reasons as to why commodities is a sector to look at. In this previous tutorial, I've mentioned that oil, in my opinion, has to go to $150, especially after China resumes its full industrial output post-COVID. What about for this tutorial? It's mentioned that palm oil is my biggest allocation because palm oil is seeing bigger demand simply because there is a war currently going on in Ukraine and Ukraine produces sunflower oil, an alternative to palm oil. So today in this tutorial, I'll be sharing with you new findings, new updates, and I'll be reviewing all the possible investments that you can make in this space of commodities. So if you're keen, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'll break this tutorial into two segments. The first regards oil, the second regards palm oil. So let's start with oil. As of this time of filming, oil is about $113. And if you see, there's a recent drop, correct, ever since 9 of June 2022. So why is there a sudden drop of about 10%? In my opinion, there are two main reasons. The first is that the market sentiment for commodities seems to have been affected. The upward momentum seems to have been affected by Fed's decision to raise interest rates. Even see news, Fed has decided to raise 75 basis points in terms of interest rates and all risky assets have corrected in one way or another. In my opinion, again, that effect is temporary and there are no changes to the fundamentals of the supply and demand for commodities, oil in particular for this case. The second reason could be demand destruction. So what exactly is demand destruction? This is an example. 45% of UK drivers have cut their vehicle journeys, especially those that are non-essential. For myself, I'm still driving to Jewel once in a while to go and see the fountain there, go and eat there. I, I quite like spending time in Jewel. It's a very nice place. Uh, but having said that, it's quite far from my home. And if petrol prices double, uh, maybe that's where I might also pull back on such unnecessary trips. So this is called a change in consumption pattern. Demand destruction, because demand has dropped, consumers are no longer consuming that. But surprisingly, in my opinion, demand destruction may also be temporary. Permanent changes to the demand supply dynamics are only if, for example, uh, now we have a new nuclear plant, new nuclear energy source, and then that's a real shift away from oil. So demand destruction, in a lot of ways, it's also temporary. You know, if you look around for articles, especially those that are credible like this, which is a commodities trader, They've mentioned before that oil could eat $150 and face demand destruction likely by end of the year. So they have given a price number, $150. But having thought through a bit deeper, I think demand destruction is not a fixed number. That's my best guess. Because there are two factors to demand destruction, especially if you like this sector, you start to read a bit more. Uh, here this point of view. Demand destruction, in my opinion, has two factors. The first is oil price versus alternatives. You know, I went to a coffee shop and I ordered roti prata. Now it's one ten already. Previously, it was $1 only. I understand that you know, wheat and flour prices are going up, so I'm not complaining too much. But I still bought the roti prata because the noodles have increased from $3.50 to $4. So my alternative has also increased. There's no choice. I can't shift. So oil's alternative ideally is renewable energy. But if you haven't seen this, let me pull it up again. Elon Musk has mentioned that sustainable energy solutions simply cannot react instantly to make up for Russia's oil and gas exports. Sustainable energy is a 10-year, 20-year future solution. Now Russia's oil is off from global supplies, especially Europe. That's why that supply crunch is really kicking in. The second factor regarding demand destruction is also relative to the time frame of increment. That's why there's no fixed number. Let's put the charts again. You realize that right now oil is $113, correct? And previously, two years ago only, during COVID, it was only at $40. So this increment has been very rapid, a 3x. And petrol prices have climbed crazily also. So it's natural for consumers to feel that pinch because, again, if it was like boiling frog theory, this $40 to $113 was done over 7 years or 10 years. We wouldn't care less, but this is a two-year rapid spike. And therefore, consumers have not been given time to adapt to you know, the amount they need to pay out from their wallets. In summary, demand destruction depends on alternatives as well as how rapid that price climb has been. With that or not, let's zoom in a bit further on oil price change and its impact on oil stocks. 
I've in this chart over here to show you using USO, United States Oil ETF, to depict roughly in terms of the oil price. Then in that blue line, you'll see an ETF that tracks big oil players, XLE. You also see an orange line, which is the ETF PSCE that invests into small cap US oil and gas players. And I've also plotted in RH Petrogas to represent Singapore's small oil and gas players. You see that that correction kicked in and that oil and gas producers were actually more impacted to it than the oil price itself. And that suggests that oil and gas stocks in the near term are impacted by oil price movements as well as market sentiment. If we zoom out a bit further to a 6 months chart and now we add in another small oil and gas player, Rex International, you see that Rex International has clearly underperformed. Another conclusion I can draw is that RH Petro Gas, which shot up in that May spike when the war came about, and that could really be due to liquidity in Singapore, whereby a small demand can really surge up a stock way more than broadly in US. But in any case, Rex International and RH Petro Gas are profitable, unlike many names in the small cap ETF. And these are some numbers to show you. The first is Rex International's holdings profits on a quarterly basis. Pretty healthy, very nice growing numbers. RH Petro Gas has also seen a climb, especially in December 2021 numbers. And for them, they'll be reporting half yearly results end of August 2022. So if you're keen, smash the subscribe, stay tuned. I might do a review on them when they release some further information. So let's move on to the second segment, which is regarding palm oil. So if you're a fellow investor in palm oil, you might be more keen on this segment. Palm oil is used in two key sectors. The first, as a biofuel, an alternative to oil. So if oil prices spike, you see people use palm oil as a biofuel for industrials. That's why there's a correlation between palm oil as well as oil. But at this moment, when sunflower oil is removed from markets because of the war in Ukraine, palm oil is now a valuable cooking oil source. In fact, it's the biggest cooking oil source. And because the supply problem originates from Ukraine, you see a stronger correlation for palm oil with wheat which is also a big produce from Ukraine. Both of them have corrected massively in this month itself. Palm oil has lost 26.93% and wheat has lost 19.55%. If we see in terms of the charts, you realize that they look pretty similar. A big climb when the war came about and then a second peak closer to May 2022. But then with Fed raising interest rates, sentiment soured and there was a big plunge for both of these as you can see in the tail end of the charts. And surprisingly for me, palm oil, if you see the trading price right now in Malaysian ringgit per ton, it's actually cheaper than before the war. And that doesn't quite make a lot of sense to me. Because quite simply, Ukraine sunflower oil is still not coming to the market and the planting season is kind of over already. So what we see in terms of impact for agricultural stocks in Singapore, I've mentioned before three names, Bumitama, First Resources and Golden Agri. These are planters, mainly holding assets in Indonesia you'd see that they've also corrected since 8th of June and they've all declined about 20 to 30%. And on my PL, the impact is quite obvious. You see at this tail end, it's dropped down tremendously. If we zoom into a 3 months basis, you will see that the blue line has decreased in tandem with NASDAQ, which is the yellow line depicted over there. But right now, NASDAQ seems to be doing a rebound, uh, which in my personal opinion, I've shared before, it's possibly a bear market rally intact. But Again, I may be wrong. That's my own personal interpretation. The more obvious conclusion is that commodities and palm oil may not outperform the index really moving forward. If the bear market drags, sentiment in general equities drag, this sector could also lose and you should not expect it to be a safe haven away from potential paper losses. In this research process, I've actually new findings regarding commodity prices and recessions. If 2023 is a big recession, I hope to prepare you a bit better on what to expect. So if you're keen, smash on subscribe. Once that new video is released as a sequel to this, get notified of it. To end off today's discussion, I would like to pull up a quote by Howard Marks. People who haven't spent time watching markets may believe that the asset prices are all about fundamentals, but that certainly not so. The price of an asset is based on fundamentals and how people view those fundamentals. If we were to look in terms of the fundamentals, for first resources and Bumitama, you realize that the profitability is very strong. And this performance is actually when palm oil prices were about 4,800 per ton in Malaysian ringgit. First quarter numbers are definitely already better for both of these companies. 
the bigger question is moving forward and the bigger question is how market views those fundamentals hopefully this sharing is of value to you smash the like button and stay on for a sequel i'll see you next tutorial take care as always goodbye